All right, so the example we're going to look at is just going to sort of illustrate how boundary value problems and initial value problems are different. So um, x double prime plus 16x equal to 0 is going to be a differential equation that has general solution x equal to c1 cosine 4t plus c2 sine 4t. And you'll learn how to find that later. But if we look at the differential equation, if we had some kind of initial value problem like this, where we want x of um, t0 equal to x1 and x of x prime of t0 equal to x2, all that matters for us are going to be the coefficients, which are constants, or the function on the right-hand side, which is 0. So everything is continuous. and non-zero that we care about, our coefficients and function that we use in this initial value problem theorem right here. So we were told we had to check for these a1 through an and g. We just check them, they're numbers. So if we consider that initial value problem with any t0, we're going to have unique solutions. That would be a pretty boring problem to have for an initial value problem theorem question. But if we have a boundary value problem, things could be different. And so we're just going to look at a few different boundary value problems and see how that works. So if we look at x double prime plus 16x equal to 0, and we say, OK, my boundary goes from 0 to pi over 2. And I want my function to be 0 at both those points. Then I just need to plug in these conditions to try and solve for my unknown constants. So if I have x is equal to c1 cosine 4t plus c2 sine 4t, I just plug in when t equals 0, I need x equal to 0. And when t equals pi over 2, I need x equals 0. So I should have 0 equals c1 cosine of 0 plus c2 sine of 0 when I plug in 0. And 0 equal to c1 cosine of 4 times pi over 2, which is just going to be 2 pi plus c2 sine of 2 pi. But when I take um, cosine of 0, I get 1. And when I get sine of 0, I get 0. So this is just c1 times 1 plus c2 times 0. Same thing happens at 2 pi, because cosine and sine repeat themselves. Um, So I get C1 for both. And so both of these things tell me that C1 should be 0. But it doesn't tell me anything about C2. So what I have here is that I don't have a unique solution because I could pick anything for C2. x equals cosine. 4t times 0 plus anything times sine 4t is fine. So sine 4t, x equals 1,000 sine 4t, anything you want. And my problem here is that that's not unique.
even though my initial value problem would be guaranteed to have a unique solution. And then we can create more examples that show us other problems that emerge. So if instead we had the initial value problem for x double prime plus 16x equal to 0 with boundary conditions x of 0 equals 0 and x of pi over 8 equal to 0, then what we're going to have is um, we should get 0 at both our values. And our first condition is the same as before. When I plug in t equals 0, oops, I should get 0. And when I plug in pi over 8, I get 4 times pi over 8, so that's just pi over 2. And that's just going to give me um, C2 this time because sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1. Cosine pi over 2 is going to be 0. So if I want this equal to 0, I have to have C2 equal to 0. And so I only have one solution, and it's, it's trivial. which isn't very satisfying. And then our last example is going to show us when we have no solutions. So x double prime plus 16x equals 0. And if we take x of 0 equal to 0 as before, but now x of pi over 2 equal to 1, c1 cosine of 0 plus c2 sine of 0 is equal to c1. So that tells me that c1 has to be equal to 0. That condition hasn't changed. But now I want to have 1 equal to c1 cosine of 4 times pi over 2, so just 2 pi again, plus c2 sine of 2 pi. And when we did um, this problem before, we saw that that just ends as c1 again. So I need to have c1 equal to 1. And both those things can't be true at once. I have no solution to this boundary value problem. So the point of this example was just to show us how a differential equation that's well behaved according to our initial value problem um, given here, which is sort of the way that we've been thinking about what changes solutions in this class. Um, if we're thinking about boundary value problems where you specify conditions at multiple points, then something that you would normally expect to have exactly one solution can have infinitely many solutions, um, only a trivial solution, or no solution. So boundary value problems can have infinitely many no solution or only trivial solutions. Where initial value problems would have unique solutions. And so um, sort of you might be thinking, that's not that strange. I wouldn't expect this new type of problem to behave the same way as an old type of problem. But you have to remember that when we check how an initial value problem um, does or does not have solutions, the conditions don't really matter. We always check the behavior of the differential equation, and that tells us what conditions are OK. 
But for boundary value problems, the behavior of the differential equation doesn't tell us anything. It's going to come down entirely to what values you specify at the boundaries and whether those are going to be fine. So it's just something to look out for.